everybody. Hopefully week two is going uh, going well for you. This is going to be a, uh, a way to practice some of the dialogue that you're going to create for your one-act play. Because remember, it's going to be a conversation. Um, it's not going to be Shakespearean. It will be influenced, again, by the nonfiction you guys read. And it's going to be focused on teenagers. Um, so this is going to be a way for you to kind of think about how to kind of create... Um, uh, authentic dialogue that sounds, you know, sounds real. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through this uh, bit by bit. Um, and obviously, uh, if you have questions, you know the drill, uh, the virtual doc or uh, reminder email, um, you know, 10 to 11, and I'll be, uh, I'll be kind of keeping an eye out. So I'll kind of go, uh, go right through this. Uh, just like in the movies, good fiction needs dialogue to engage readers and infuse its story with drama. There's more to the purpose of dialogue, though, than just giving the main players words to say. Through characterization and plot development, dialogue is ultimately a source of critical information in helping readers understand the story. So you're not just stuck with the narrator, right? You know, you have dialogue that helps you get to know your characters, creates tension, it creates maybe a problem, it could be an argument, it could be um, any kind of real conversation, all right? Your play obviously does not have a narrator. So you're going to have to accomplish most of what you want to do through your dialogue. All right. So step one, um, as you see here, all right, um, is an example of short dialogue. All right. David Mamet's play. It's just an excerpt. Okay. So I'll read through it. All right. And then we'll think about what we're learning from that. All right. And it's, it's implied about what we're learning about the characters. Okay. You're later going to kind of create your own. Okay. So let's just do step one first. Okay. Uh, reading through the dialogue. And we could have all this, she said. And we could have everything, and every day we make it more impossible. What did you say? I said we could have everything. We can have everything. No, we can't. We can have the whole world. No, we can't. We can go everywhere. No, we can't. It isn't ours anymore. It's ours. No, it isn't. And once they take it away, you never get it back. So now, when you think about this question, what do we learn about the characters through their issue, um, or excuse me, their use of dialogue, all right? If you skip, you know, if you don't think ahead or, or read ahead, um, just, you know, read back, look at that conversation, and what are you learning about the characters? Each one is different, you know, every line is somebody else. What are you learning about those characters, okay? If you pause and think about for that for a second, and then you kind of read on, here are a few things we do learn. Okay. One is very pessimistic. Okay. Starts almost all the sentences with the word no. Right off the bat, that is kind of combative. It's a little, you know, it's a little negative, pessimistic. Okay. One is optimistic. Starts almost all the sentences with we. This person seems to think if they work together, they can achieve whatever it is they want. So again, you haven't read the play. You don't know the context. So we're learning this just through dialogue. All right. Pessimism and optimism shown right through their words. No and we. Okay, we suggest they can work together and, and do something, accomplish something together. All right. Next up, they both realize something will be taken away from them. And that foreshadows something big going to happen. All right. It also creates some suspense and maybe some tension. Okay. If something is coming up. All right. And they use short and choppy sentences. Okay. And maybe that shows there's a, it's a tense discussion. Okay. You're not getting a chance to say a lot because you're kind of arguing. You're going back and forth. Okay. That's all implied in a very short, you know, look how short those lines are, okay? Your play is not going to be paragraph after paragraph. That's not how people talk, okay? So we learned all of this in just a very short excerpt, okay? And maybe we're wrong about some of it. For the most part, I think that's all pretty spot on, okay? So step two, okay? And this is where you guys are going to do a little work on dialogue, all right. So below are various dialogue exercises. You're going to pick two sentence starters. Okay. And I'm going to add that here and start writing um, a back and forth conversation. Each one should be a minimum of six lines. You can go beyond that if you want, but just six lines, a six line conversation. And that includes the dialogue starter itself. You don't have to know who the characters are, where they are, or why they're at odds. 
Dialogue is one of the best ways to learn about your characters. Then, you must explain what you learn about each character based on the dialogue you write. So, you obviously know what you're learning because you're writing it, right? You are supposed to inform me about what you're or what you want me to learn or what you want me to observe about your characters. Okay? So obviously you know what we're learning about the characters because you're making them up in your head. Okay? If you want to name them, go ahead. Okay? But just like the dialogue up here, you know, set it up just like that. Every other line is a new character. So if you down here you want to put, you know, um, person A and then B talks and then A talks, so on and so forth, you could do that. If you want to name them, go ahead, you know, uh, John and Billy, all right? Feel free to do that, to keep it kind of clear in your head and even clear for me, okay? So that's fine, okay? If you want to do it like that, that's fine. So six lines, here are some ways you can start the dialogue, okay? And the conversation, again, we don't have context. You're making it up in your head um, with the six lines, at least six lines. First one. I thought you were supposed to call me. Keep in mind, I read that with a certain tone. It's possible that you could change that tone, you know, depending on how you emphasize the words. You know, I thought you were supposed to call me. See, that sounds a little different. You know, one was a little angry and one a little different. Okay, so keep in mind what you emphasize changes sort of the way we read it. So keep that in mind when you kind of pick. Next one, I never, ever want to hear you say that again. Third, don't just stand there looking at me. Four, I know it's a little expensive. And five, in my next life, I want to come back as a butterfly. That's a weird one. I don't know why you'd be saying that with somebody. But um, again, two are going to fill in down here. Okay, so one dialogue here starts with one of these. And another one will start over here. So two different conversations, okay? And then uh, the two things I want you to answer, okay? What can you learn about your characters based on that dialogue? So what am I supposed to take away from that dialogue, okay? Keep that in mind. You're going to fill that in down here. So based on your conversations that you create, what are we learning, okay? Because you're going to have to do that in your one-act play, okay? I need to learn about your characters. What am I learning here about that conversation, okay? This is practice. It'll get you ready for the one-act play, all right? If you have any questions, again, you know the drill, virtual help doc, email.